Hey folks, welcome back. And today we're on the Bonneville. Actually, this is a few days after I've come back from my European trip on the Tiger. So this bike feels really small in comparison. Now, I just managed to grab a break in the weather to head up to the South Lakes. Just going to have some uh, Sunday lunch with my uh, family. Now, I hope you've tuned in to episode one of the European trip. Uh, there's three episodes. Episode two will be... Uh, actually, you've already seen it um, because I'm releasing them on Fridays. So, uh, a couple of days before this video, if you check in the back catalogue, the one before this, you'll see the, uh, the episode two. So, go and, uh, go and check that out if you haven't. And if you're new to the channel, appreciate if you can uh, subscribe and also give this video a big like, guys. Now, how did the Tiger 1200 do on the trip? I've had lots of questions. Was it comfortable? Uh, well, yes, I can tell you it was very comfortable. So even the last day, the motorway day to get back to the UK, I actually travelled 850 miles in one day from 6am till 9pm at night when I walked through my house door. And uh, that was from just below Grenoble in France to Lancashire. I only stopped for fuel stops, uh, fuel stops being four of, and a sandwich en route and a couple of coffees. But yeah, it was really, really comfy. A lot of you have asked me uh, how it compares to the Explorer that I took last year to Switzerland. Well, I'm going to be doing a, an end of trip report on the Tiger and with the Tiger, not with the Bonneville. But I can tell you that the 1200, the Tiger 1200 Rally Pro that I own wasn't as comfy as the Explorer with the 30 litre tank. Now the only difference being on that bike is that it's got a 30 litre tank, but the bit that made it uncomfy, and I'm gonna rectify it and tell you why and how, was that the handlebars on the Rally Pro and the GT, as opposed to the GT Explorer and the Rally Explorer. On the Rally Explorer, the bars are set higher and a little bit more swept back. So arm positioning are a little bit more bent on the Explorer, as opposed to the GT or the Rally Pro. And that's all it was, just on uh, incredibly long days uh, I found that the tops of my shoulders, uh, where I'm kind of stretching for the bars, were a little bit achy. Uh, it wasn't too much that I would say it's uncomfy. Incredibly comfy bike, either way. But what I'm doing to rectify that is to get a set of bar risers, which are on order, which actually uh, raise the bars by 25mm and 20mm back, which will then make it similar position to the uh, GT Explorer and the Rally Explorer and that will make it perfect then so uh, yeah that answers that question I know some of you have asked now we're just going to hop on to some dual carriageway here so there'll be a lot of wind so I'll just cut the video here and I'll be back in a second okay one of the things that I wanted to show you that I actually took on the trip with me to Italy was a uh, locking device, like a, a steel cable lock device that you can actually lock your helmet to the bike. Now I found this really, really useful while I was uh, having a coffee and you know, even though the bike was within sight, it just enabled me to leave the helmet on the bike and uh, not worry about it really. Um, yes, like anything, anybody can cut through something. Um, but uh, if you want to just uh, quickly grab a coffee somewhere and don't want to take your helmet into the cafe, you could lock it to your bike. So I'm going to show you that now. Uh, this device, I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, bought it off Amazon, somebody recommended it to me. Okay, so this is the device. Uh, it's called Life Venture. Uh, it's made of uh, ABS plastic, really, really hard. It's got a combination lock on it and uh, also it's got a steel cable that uh, you can literally pull out and this is about uh, 1.2 meters long and it's retractable so what you can do is just set the passcode on the, uh, the rotation lock just there uh, you can actually take it put it through your helmet you can put it through one of the bars on the bike and then literally 
tighten it up, click it in place, and then just set your passcode. Um, so that's it, your helmet's locked and in position. Um, it's a steel cable, and yeah, like I say, somebody could cut through that eventually quite easily, but uh, for the odd occasion where you just want to lock your helmet on your bike and uh, just a bit of extra security, uh, that's what I took on the trip, and it became uh, very, very handy. Literally, you just take it off and then press the button, and then it goes back in. That's how big it is. Uh, it's about the size of my four fingers. Uh, it's quite slim as well, probably about 10 to 12 millimeters wide, and uh, it can fit in your pocket. So uh, yeah, I carry that everywhere with me now. Like I say, it came in handy on the trip. I'll pop a link in the description below. I'm not affiliated with this company, um, but I thought it was quite a useful tool uh, for bike trips. So the Triumph Bonneville. Um, yeah, like I say, when I got back on this just now, it uh, felt really tiny in comparison to the Triumph Tiger 1200. Uh, I absolutely adore this bike, as you know. And for those of you who have just subscribed to the channel, we've got lots of videos on the Triumph T120 Bonneville. Uh, this is the Black Series. Um, go and check those out in the back catalogue. And if you've any questions about this bike, just pop them in the comments below. Happy to answer those. Now, there's a few old cars keep passing me. I would imagine there's a classic car show somewhere. I must say, it's always lovely to go away on a bike trip and it's always lovely to come home and uh, ride your local roads and also very nice to get out on the bonnie. I'm going to try and mix both bikes up on the channel a little bit. I know the Tiger's had a lot of attention lately with me getting it ready for that trip. But moving forward, we'll alternate weeks probably on the, uh, the bikes. After all, that's what I bought them for, was to ride them, so uh, might as well bring you along for the journey. Now, I mentioned the bar risers. I'll do a video and, and show you those. Uh, I'm not sure whether I'll do a, a fitment video until I see how involved they are to, uh, to fit. Now, I also took the new DJI Action 4, which is here. Normally, I would have that on my helmet, with it being a bigger sensor. Um, but I always notice on the cameras when I when I use the DJI Action 3 where it is looking back at me very in very low light um, with the UK being grey most of the time um, it doesn't really show me unless the, the sunlight's on me too well so I wanted to get the best picture quality so I'm just checking whether this one now looking at me with the bigger sensor is a lot better than the Action 3 if it is, then I'll get another DJI Action 4, so I'll have one on my helmet and also one on the, uh, the handlebars, and then I'll, uh, I'll get rid of the Action 3s, I think. I do find uh, that the Action 4 in low light is better, and with the UK being grey and uh, not as sunny as most countries, I think they will work better. So, uh, yeah. Well, I'm just in, uh, in South Lakes more old cars just here beautiful definitely a classic car show somewhere so yeah thanks for tuning in guys we'll cut the video there but uh, yeah don't forget to tune in on episode three where we take in uh, the Ducati factory actually at Bologna and also the Futa Pass from Bologna to uh, Florence which is an absolute epic epic run really enjoyed it so that will be the uh, the last one in the series from the trip and uh, that will come next friday at 4 p.m so cheers for tuning in give us a big like and uh, if you're not a subscriber don't forget to hit that subscribe button and we'll catch you soon ciao for now